Ladies and gentlemen, what a treat we have in store here to kick off tonight's sports report show on Sportinarium, the number one radio station, and also for the week shows here on Sportinarium, because we have somebody that we've talked about here, somebody who has been an integral part of KOW and also the pro wrestling scene here in the UK. And she's somebody that's definitely worked very hard because she was one of the people that put together the top 10 matches of 2019 for one of our favorite promotions that is of course KOW. She's also doing a phenomenal job where she's the reporter for KOW in addition to the fact that she is also the president. That's right ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Lancaster Uni Pro Wrestling Society. She's also a writer for the Mick Carter's one of the premier pro wrestling sites that has been around a very very long time and we are very happy to have her on the sports report and without further ado here on the sports report the number one global sports show the reporter for and the president of the Lancaster Uni Pro Wrestling Society Wow, My what friend. can I say? That's the best introduction I've ever had. <laughs> Well, you can have it for the rest of your life, Lucy. So if you have a recorder, when you listen back to this- Yeah, I'm going to replay that a lot. <laughs> I am sure your many friends, your many fans listening to this on Sportinarium, and I'm sure the KOW universe will do the same. And it's a tremendous honor to have you. We talked about you on last week's show and a few of these shows here on Sportinarium. You've been a very integral part to KOW, Knockout Wrestling, obviously. And we had obviously the biggest, I think, guest that has ever come on from KOW, and that is last week's guest, Sheriff Steele, the legendary Sheriff Steele. So we're going to try and top this one with you, Lucy. No pressure at all, but it's a tremendous honor to have you here on the Sports Report and on Sportinarium. And for a worldwide audience listening here on Sportinarium, because I know that you were a big part of the top 10 matches in 2019 from KOW and putting that together. What did that mean to you to be able to be a part of KOW and put that top 10 match list together for 2019? I mean, thank you so much. That's such a kind introduction. And um, uh, I'm, I'm really honoured to be on the show. So thank you for having me. You know, to be a part of KOW, it really does mean the world to me because it is definitely a small company, but it feels huge because of the way that they operate and the way they carry themselves. It's, it's really professional and the storylines are so intricate and detailed and they span back for years. So to be able to be in a position where I can tell these stories in my articles is so awesome because I really feel as if I'm a part of something huge. And yeah, and to have that top 10 list at kind of like the forefront of the discussion of the 2019 matches was really special to me because, um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just a fan, um, just giving my opinion, really. And um, I love hearing uh, other people's responses to the list because that's one of the best things about wrestling is that it's subjective and everyone's got totally different opinions. So, you know, everyone, we can argue about it, we can discuss it and everyone would have a different top 10. So, yeah, to have my opinion kind of be at the the forefront of the discussion. And uh, I've been listening to the show and to have you guys talk about, you know, the list and you know the fact that I sat and did that it, it's it's kind of surreal to me actually yeah <laughs> It's almost like when Chris Jericho had the list when he was with Kevin Owens back in 2016 to 2017. <laughs> Lucy had the list when it comes to KOW. And I want to ask you this question also for our worldwide audience listening here on Sportinarium, and especially for the KOW fans that are listening to this. I mean, how difficult was it to put together that top 10 when it came to the KOW matches of 2019? It was really difficult because there's so many matches that I wanted to include and wrestlers that I wanted to acknowledge. I mean, I think... I was listening to Andrew talk the other week on your show, and I think he said there's something like 30 matches or something like in 2019. So it was really hard to whittle it down. And like everyone at KOW worked so hard in the ring. So it's like you don't want to leave anyone out of it because everyone deserves recognition for what they do. For me, storylines are a huge part of it. So feuds and emotional moments played into it. That was a really big part of it, as well as match quality. So I worked for hours studying each match card and kind of racking my brain for the moments and memories that I could remember, like my personal favorite highlights. 
also trying to, you know, recall the matches that had the biggest reactions from the crowd. Because I feel like that's something that is really integral to wrestling is if you get a crowd invested in your match, then you know you're doing something right. And um, and yeah, I, I know um, I've heard Ryan Grayson and Sheriff Steele making it obvious that they think their match should have been number one rather than number two. And Deco was really annoyed that he was number 10 rather than number one. And Andy said that somebody would swap around. And I love hearing what other people have to say about it. And it's great to get to sit down and discuss it and kind of open up that discussion, really. Did some of the wrestlers who were in the top 10 or even those who weren't in the top 10 message you and say, hey, Lucy, I thought that my match should have been higher or hey, Lucy, I thought that I should have been in the top 10. I mean, talk to me if any of the wrestlers had messaged you about where they were in the top 10 or if they weren't in the top 10 at all. You know, actually, no one like messaged me directly and kind of, you know, tried to contact me saying, hey, why am I much in the top 10? Because to be fair, at KOW, they're all so lovely and so welcoming and so professional. But I have had Sheriff Steele tweeting at me being like, well, match was number two. I think it should be number one. And I'm just like, yeah, fair enough. You can think that if you want. Um, but I mean, that's it, really. Like I said, that's what's so good about wrestling. Like everyone can bring their own opinions forward. And like, I'm not going to take it personally as like an insult against my writing or anything. I'm just like, oh, yeah, t- tell me why do you think you know you should be number one convince me because at the end of the day my article was just trying to convince people these matches are worth watching so I think in in wrestling it's really important to get everyone's input and to hear what everyone else thinks as well do you feel pressure in the back of your mind that might occur when it came to some of the wrestlers no I didn't KOW has never been anything to me other than a really friendly place to be and it is like a very family atmosphere there and there's no big egos or anything in KOW and to be honest it's just like everyone treats each other with respect and it's just a really nice place to be really so no I never really felt that kind of anxiety I I mean I maybe thought I hope no one takes offense to it I didn't let it get to me or affect the way I I wrote it I kind of just went with (laughs) with what I thought (laughs) well clearly Lucy you're not a Dave Meltzer where some of the wrestlers you see them go back and forth (laughs) with him on Twitter or a Wade Keller so clearly Lucy you're doing a good job because you don't have the wrestlers tweet at you and almost start the firestorm no pun intended so you're definitely doing a good job and that's why we have you here on the sports report to talk about all things related to KOW and especially those top 10 matches for 2019 and what was it like going back and watching those matches again and compiling this list it was really quite emotional at times you live in some of those moments especially as I'm sure we'll talk about a bit more later um you know King Ryan Grayson turned on Sheriff Steele for example that that really tugged at the heartstrings and, and Sheriff Steele's retirement and to be honest like through lockdown it's been really good to revisit these matches because I've missed live wrestling so much I think that's if I could pinpoint one thing that I've missed the most over lockdown it's it's been live wrestling and I think KOW making these matches available has, has been great because it's almost like you're there again and you, you're living in the moment and it, it's brilliant and it, the matches just they never really lose that special kind of spark of when you first watch it and then you remember oh I remember why I love this match and, and yeah so it, it's really it has been emotional definitely I know that ALP had mentioned on social media a few different times that he had felt a certain way without KOW and there were times where he had felt that there wasn't hope or he had felt that there was a void and I could certainly sympathize with that because for pro wrestling as a whole especially in the UK I think more so than the US there has been a tremendous void especially with no fans at all I mean the US at least throughout the pandemic AEW had some some fans there was some indie companies because again half the country in the u.s operated as if there was no pandemic and unfortunately here in new york we've pretty much been no different than where you are so in that standpoint it was some places that opened up and had fans but throughout the uk it was nothing it was next to nothing when it came to wrestling as a whole so i know that he had felt a certain way and understandably so i mean now that we've been talking about kow here on the sports report and on sport and over the past few months and obviously with ALP and Sheriff Steele last week and a number of the different wrestlers that were a part of this list. Do you feel in a way that there's hope now and that maybe that you guys see some light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to KOW? 
Definitely. I mean, yeah, like ALP was saying, I think over lockdown, it was hard on everyone's mental health. And the fact that we had all these shows scheduled, we were so excited and they were cancelled right at the last minute. The first KOW show of 2020, right until the day before I was planning to go. And then that's when it got cancelled. And I think that moment was when it started to set in and it started to feel real and it started to be like, oh, what now? And not being able to go to wrestling shows, it's kind of, it's hard as a fan, but I imagine it must be even harder for the wrestlers because that's kind of like the whole, their whole life basically and they kind of stuck without that kind of purpose I guess I suppose and it, yeah I think hopefully if by is it September we've been hopefully saying KOW can get back I mean that definitely is a light at the end of the tunnel for us because that's kind of going to be a sign that things are getting back to normal and it's time to get excited about wrestling again absolutely and we always say on this show for the past two and a half years that a rising tide lifts all boats and we're very confident now that KOW is going to have that rising tide that is going to lift it we're very excited about the fact that there could possibly be some shows once again here for KOW because we like to talk some upcoming and future matches from KOW because it has been a very long time and there's no better person right now to be talking KOW with. That is Lucy Simons, who's also the reporter for KOW. She's also the president of the Lancaster Uni Pro Wrestling Society, so she's somebody who knows her stuff. That's why we have her here on the Sports Report and on Sport and Area to kick off the week shows here, and especially Friday Night Show. And I am the host of the Sports Report, the Reverend Tom Bryce, and also now the station manager of Sport and Area. And we are talking all things related to KOW with Lucy Simons. And Lucy, also, I got to ask you then for our worldwide audience listening here on Sportinarium what got you into KOW? It's quite a funny story actually so KOW Wanted was my first KOW event which it was the first KOW show of 2019 and I only found out about it because my best friend actually went to college at the time with 2Bit and he convinced her to buy a ticket from him because he was trying to sell tickets and she knew I loved wrestling so she asked me if I wanted to go and I obviously said yes I was so excited because I had no idea that this wrestling company was operating so close to me because I, I live about 45 minutes away so the advertising hadn't really reached me at that point and I was so excited and as soon as I got there I was blown away by the match quality I mean it was unlike anything I'd ever seen before especially like so close to where I live I kind of got resigned to the fact that if I want to see awesome indie wrestling I'm gonna have to travel quite far afield and at this point in my life I didn't really have the means to do that so it really reignited my love for wrestling to be honest because it, it was a small company but it was filled with wrestlers who put their own in the matches I mean that first night I tweeted at the main event which was um Taylor West versus Nightmare versus Craig Collin wouldn't have looked out of place on Raw and it was true it was very true and my tweet actually made it onto KW's Facebook page and I was very surprised by that but yeah that's how I found out about it and then becoming a reporter for it was kind of just a really strange moment of courage for me which it was just one of the biggest steps I've ever made I, I'd seen three of the shows and I loved all of them and I was desperate to write about it because that's just the type of person I am I'm really passionate about everything I do and watch especially wrestling and I always want to get my thoughts down on paper and share it with people especially if I'm optimistic about something I think it's great I want everyone to know and I just remember thinking to myself like I know I can write I know I can I know a lot about wrestling and I'm passionate about it and as far as I can tell like KOW doesn't have anyone writing detailed match reports or articles which they really needed because the storylines were amazing I mean they did have the results and stories post on their Facebook which is great because it allows you to keep up with it even if you miss the shows but I just thought like maybe they need help doing that and I knew I could bring it to the table so I just thought I've got nothing to lose and I just messaged the Facebook page and said who I was and that I loved the company if they needed help with content writing or helping out at shows that I'd love to help and to my surprise I didn't get ignored or politely declined but they took me up on the offer which was amazing because at the time I had no professional experience but I'd written it as a hobby so I sent ALP so my writing over and he said if you write a, a report for the next show and we'll see where we go from there I went to the next show which was Road to Gold 6 and he asked me to meet him beforehand and I was really nervous and I just remember thinking this is probably going to be like filled with testosterone I'm going to be totally <laughs> what I got myself into but to be honest ALP was so lovely and he, he was really kind and he was welcoming as part of what I wanted to do and I, I wrote the report and then it was published and then there was a post announcing me as their official reporter and and from there yeah that's where we are today so I can clearly see that you know your stuff and you definitely know how to write because I've seen your writing obviously here over the past several months so you could definitely do a lot better job than I would because I can barely write so clearly you can see that I'm from New York and from Brooklyn because I can barely put two words together let alone do a writing a whole report on a wrestling event and especially a wrestling event like KOW because KOW puts on events that aren't like many others and I would argue that some of them might be better than some of the most recent Raws that I've watched but that's certainly from a different topic and what did that mean to you then when AL 
GOP decides, all right, you know what, Lucy, you're going to be our official reporter. I mean, that's a big burden. That's a big task. I mean, that's a tremendous honor to be an official named for anything. I mean, what did that mean to you for a worldwide audience listening here on Sportinarium, and especially the many KOW fans listening on? What did that mean to you then to be named the official reporter at KOW? It really meant the world to me, and I can't, I can't thank ALP enough for giving me that chance and believing in me, because to be fair, I do think it was like, it's kind of a risk for him, because I was essentially just 18-year-old at the time, just being like, hey, I want to work for you, and he said, yeah, sure, why not? And I think that was like, definitely risk, and I just can't thank him enough for giving me the opportunity, because, you know, it's allowed me to get an actual experience and improve my writing and journalism skills, which is obviously invaluable for me going forward. Like I said before, it was like the biggest step for me that I'd ever took at the time. Like, it took a lot of courage to do it, but I'm so glad I did, because my confidence has grown so much. And it's given me a start to what I hope can be a career in wrestling journalism, which, as cliche as it sounds, has always been my childhood dream. So it's surreal for me to actually be doing it. And I, I couldn't ask for a more exciting company to have this start with. I mean, I think in some other wrestling companies, it would simply be, you know, a bad guy versus a good guy, and the good guy wins, and it's not a very good match, but, you know, write about it. And in KW, it's really not like that. There's a lot of backstory, a lot of attention to detail. So, and the match is always really intense. So it's kind of challenging, actually, to try and convey that, but in a good way, because it's exciting. Exciting. It's really stimulating. It's something that I genuinely want to write about and I feel passionate about. And, you know, it is really special for me to be a part of the KOW family because it really is a family and it was so welcoming to me from the get go. Let me ask you this question, Lucy, and I'm curious about this, especially for our worldwide audience listening here on Sport and Area. Now that you're a reporter and you write for KOW, I'm sure you're a huge wrestling fan. I can clearly see that you know your stuff about wrestling, you know a lot more about wrestling than I would or many of our worldwide audience listening here on Sport Nerd because obviously we're not the PW Torch. We're not a wrestling podcast per se. So we cover all different topics. But let me ask you this question though. Do you watch a wrestling match now differently because you're writing about it? And I would compare it similar to let's say a boxing judge where if somebody's watching a boxing fight, they might be watching it differently than myself or even some of the boxers that we have with Sport Nerdium or also when I was in politics when we covered the news report when I would work for these state senators and these congressmen and these political candidates where we would have a debate and we would take notes throughout the debate because we would obviously want to use it to analyze our opponent and also analyze the candidate that we're working for I mean do you watch a match now differently because you're now the official reporter for KOW than prior when you weren't? That is a really interesting question I think the comparison to like politics and, and boxing is really apt because yeah I guess when you take a different position to a sport or an event it, it can give you a different eye for it but to be completely honest I don't put the matches very differently because I've always kind of had a critical eye and I've always enjoyed watching things or reading things to the end of evaluating if I thought it was good or not or sharing my thoughts and kind of summarising it for someone else to read I think that's probably why I'm an English literature student I've really enjoyed my degree you know since I was younger I used to have a huge notebook filled with articles I've written about WWE shows so it's kind of something I've always always done just because I enjoy doing it and the only difference is now it actually gets read by other people so I guess it I guess it does kind of change in a way because it means that I'm focused on the match then for example if I was just going to casually watch it and having a drink and chatting with my friends during it <laughs> um but I do think that it actually makes me enjoy it more because I'm paying really close attention and, and I'm appreciating it and kind of looking out for things I can write about and that kind of helps me enjoy it more than if I was just kind of passively watching it well listen Lucy I am sure you are a much better writer than I was because I can certainly remember when I was in college trying to pass English 101 and I would write these different papers and I'd have to do it over and over and over. So thankfully, I'm not the official reporter for KLW. I'm not the writer for the mid-carters because I'm sure KLW would be out of business and the mid-carters would be out of business. And that's why we have you here in the sports report. And that's why we have you reporting and writing for those obviously great companies and those great websites. And you brought up 2Bit a few minutes ago. And 2Bit, I felt like, was the MVP of KLW because if I'm not mistaken, he was on six of those top 10 matches of 2019. You got to see 
see all these wrestlers on behalf of KOW. And I feel like two bits, one of the guys that you're going to want to pay attention to very closely here with wrestling returning here in the UK, and especially for the future of pro wrestling. And I have the feeling that two bits going to join somebody like a Chris Ridgway who was in KOW in the past. I mean, what made two bit stand out so much to you other than the fact that he tried to sell tickets to your friend to come to a KOW show? <laughs> I mean, the fact that two of it appears so often in the list isn't something that I consciously planned out in my head. And in fact, I don't even think I noticed it until someone else pointed it out. It's just something that organically happened because it speaks volumes about his ability, really. He just There's something about his matches that are really smooth, technically sound as well as brutal. And he's a future world champ, in my opinion. And, and I don't just mean in KOW, I mean across the country, even possibly across the world. You know, he worked really well as a bad guy. And he fits really well into that role, like really naturally. It's very easy to dislike him and boo him his feud with Lucas Neon is, is one of KOW's legendary stories like their match was really really deserving of the top spot because of that like emotional ramifications and just the incredible work rate that they pulled off I was really really impressed and enthralled of every second of it and the fact that they're both so young it's kind of amazing because they've got such a long career ahead of them and they've already achieved so much and even in that match you know you had the appearance of the underclass and the freak show which it made it more exciting it didn't hinder the match quality at all so yeah I think Tuba is definitely one to watch for all of you know the UK indie scene I know he's he's at uni in Manchester at the moment and he's he's um going on to kind of doing more indie promotions around that area and I think he's really going to thrive once Covid goes away I think I think 2021 probably 2022 it's going to be his year let me ask you a question because you're on the younger side obviously versus let's say a Sheriff Steele or let's say the Cumbrian outlaw Rick Marcus obviously two bit in the ring and and you also mentioned Lucas Neon and also part of the freak show, Will Carter. Do you feel that maybe you personally relate more to them in the ring because they're essentially peers of yours? They could be somebody that's classmates. They could be friends of yours. I'm curious if you watch them in the ring and also how they carry themselves or conduct themselves in terms of maybe if you relate to them a little bit more than, let's say, some of the other wrestlers in KOW yeah I think you're right I think I do because 2Bit you know as I said before he, he was one of my friend's friends and I wasn't perhaps like naively I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was when I went to that first show because he was so young and you know actually you mentioned Will Carter as well 2Bit Lucas and Will Carter they all started training when they were like 11, 12, 13 years old and they're only just in the 20s they've got a future ahead of them and but they've also got loads of years of experience at the same time so I think it is it's kind of I don't know how to describe it it's, it's like seeing yeah as you say like a potential classmate in the ring and absolutely tearing the house down and just showing everyone how it should be done um and that's not to take anything away from the older guys as well like they've all come up through the KOW academy and they're all you know amaz amazing products of that which kind of speaks volumes about KOW and the amount of stars it's produced for itself no matter what their age are no matter what their age is you know these older wrestlers such as Rick Marcus they can still go out there and tear the house down and go toe to toe with the two bit but yeah like seeing someone your own age out there just kind of get you thinking and it is incredible to think that they've got a whole lot of years ahead of them in the ring absolutely and we definitely know that they do and also lucas neon got to give him a huge shout out obviously the current showcase champion and talk to me about what it was like watching that match in person between him and two bit for the showcase championship the tlc match that was the top match of the year in kow and i would argue it's one of the top matches all time in the company's history History. And that's saying a lot, but the kind of workers, obviously, that Tubit and Lucas Neon are in the ring clearly shows that they are very worthy and very deserving of that honor and that recognition. So what was that like for you watching that match? It was amazing, actually, because, you know, like you say, it was an incredible match and probably one of the best in KOW history. It, these two, Lucas Neon and Tubit, the kind of, Lucas Neon is like the mirror image of Tubit. So they both started training around the same time and debuted against each other in 2017. And they've been major players in KOW ever since they debuted. But the only difference really is that Bit is hated and Neon is loved. They are perfect enemies. And, you know, you could argue that they're the faces of KOW. I mean, Neon, since Sheriff Steel has retired, probably is the biggest 
fan favorite in the company and so when these two get in the ring together it, it is like wrestling soulmates to be honest they obviously have really good chemistry and you can just tell it's like they can read each other's minds the match was really it was brutal so it being a table sliders and chairs match just kind of added to this level of intensity that they always bring to the ring anyway so there was loads of experimental like innovative offense from both of them. and you know they were all over the venue they were on top of the ladder they were through tables it was really enthralling you couldn't look away for a second because you would have missed something and when Lucas won it was an incredible moment everyone in the crowd was so behind him it was really quite emotional because everyone they hated two bit and they loved Lucas Neon and the roof nearly blew off the place it was so loud and it was an incredible moment to be there mention Lucas Neon obviously in the reaction that he gets and he might very well be the top good guy in KOW but the person that had that role and had that title was on the show last week and he is arguably the most important wrestler in the history of KOW and that is the legendary Sheriff Steele and we saw that Sheriff Steele unfortunately his career is no longer in KOW and he was number two in the Sheriff Rules match when it came to the retirement match against Rick Marcus the Cumbrian Outlaw and we saw that rivalry now that rivalry very well might be the most important one in the history of KOW from your vantage point Lucy what was it like watching that match and your thoughts also on Sheriff Steele yeah Sheriff Steele and Rick Marcus's feud as you say is is another one of the legendary ones in in KW and um, expanded all the way back to 2016 in fact that's amazing that the, the storyline went on for this long and it was intense from start to finish now, obviously it was a shame for everyone to see Sheriff Steele have to retire but he couldn't have gone out in a bigger way really the match was the perfect way to end his career it was quite poetic because it was such a long feud and it was the ultimate culmination of that obviously with Grayson turning on Sheriff that was a big moment like I mentioned before that was really emotional I was attending the show with my friends from the Lancaster Pro Wrestling Society and it was their first KLW show so they weren't quite as invested in the story as me like they hadn't really seen to unfold so when Grayson came out to the ring and my, my friends are all big smart max obviously and my friend Jack turned to me and he just said he's turning and he suspected it well before I suspected anything so I was too busy enjoying the match and then he turned out to be right and I was gutted I mean we still talk about it to this day they all laugh at me because they'll say I looked like I was about to cry which to be honest I wasn't far from because it was insanely shocking it was a huge moment and I couldn't have predicted it I mean Sheriff Steele is such a lovable character putting an amazing performance like he is such a gritty wrestler and he fights with his heart so it was really sad to see his career end in this way but in a way it, it was the only way it could have ended if that makes sense like it wasn't anticlimactic at all it was a perfect ending and it certainly left an impact on my friends it, it was even though it was the first show and they can't wait to come back I mean it was an incredible showcase of KOW and what KOW can do in terms of not just putting on a match but also telling a story it's left them wanting more it's left everyone wanting more and we definitely want more but Lucy I gotta ask you something and I want to go back to it and we will and that's the Lancaster Uni Pro Wrestling Society but you said something about the term a smart or a mark for a worldwide audience listening here on Sport and Airing because obviously we're not familiar with some of those terms what do you mean by those terms marks and sort of how they may watch a match differently versus like somebody, let's say, like myself or many of the audience here on Sport and Earn. Talk to me about those terms and what they mean. So I guess in the simplest terms, calling someone a smart mark or a smark for short is kind of, I think it's kind of like a negative term in wrestling sometimes. It kind of means a fan who thinks they know everything about wrestling and is like, wants to kind of express how negative they think shows are and they know the ins and outs and everything that's going on backstage or so they think they do because they read the dirt sheets and whatever. So it's kind of like, a fan but like maybe a bit of a step forward from a fan someone who takes it very seriously I mean you you probably describe me as a smart mark but kind of just ignore that I just kind of think oh, I'm a dedicated fan it yeah it, it kind of depends on who you ask if it's negative or if it's a positive thing but yeah it, it's just kind of means someone who's very invested I suppose well, I'll tell you what, you definitely seem very invested and you definitely seem a lot smarter than me along with the rest of your friends. So I don't think that they would be describing Tom Bryson smart in the same sentence by a long shot. So that's why we have you on the show here. I did want to ask for a worldwide audience listening here on Sport Area that you're actually the president. So congratulations that you're actually a president of something. And that is the Lancaster Uni Pro Wrestling Society. So talk about the Lancaster Uni Pro Wrestling Society and what that is. 
I absolutely love the Lancastrian Pro Wrestling Society and I'm really honoured to be president so thank you. It's it's literally a fan society and we're a group of friends. We're quite a small society at Lancaster University so there's hundreds of societies here and some of them have hundreds of members. We don't have hundreds of members but we one of the most passionate groups you'll ever meet and we have so much fun together. So obviously when Covid wasn't a thing we'd meet up every week. We do watch parties, gaming events, trips to shows when we could, quizzes and nights out, socials you know and just have fun and just bring wrestling fans together have a debate have an argument about what's the best match of all time who's the best wrestler of all time and just kind of have a big nerd out over wrestling and it's so fun it's brought me so much joy it's absolutely made my university experience to be honest and even over lockdown we were still still doing things on um, on our discord server and that really got me through um, lockdown it's very difficult but like having that kind of that friendship group we all come together and doesn't matter like what we've been up to for the rest of the week we just come together and talk about wrestling and have a great time and have a drink sometimes and just enjoy ourselves and yeah it's it's a real honor to be president really love it it's one of my favorite things absolutely and congratulations to you on that role and everybody can follow the lancaster uni pro wrestling society on twitter at l-u-p-w underscore s-o-c that's at l-o-u-p-w underscore s-o-c and find out why the lancaster uni pro wrestling society is doing many great things including show trips watch parties gaming events and more so we're very excited to see that lancaster uni pro wrestling society i'm sure will be getting ready and near and dear in the distant future and listen lucy parties and universities I mean, that's stuff that I clearly didn't do enough of in college. So the fact that you're doing that, you're having a good time. I know with COVID, it hasn't been the same, but you guys, I'm sure, should definitely enjoy yourself. But I also wanted to ask you this question when it comes to the current KOW world champion, the war machine, Craig Collins. And what's your thoughts on him? And what's it like watching him in the ring? He is an absolute beast and he never gives up. Even at Road to Gold 6, when um, Taylor West injured his ankle, he still went on to win the whole thing. But he is so determined that he never actually doubted his ability to fight through his injury and it was unbelievable to see him do that I mean the match was awesome as well because it, it also featured the return of Sheriff Steel and um, which reignited the feud between himself and Rick Marcus who was also in the match it was triple threat so it was as intense as you can imagine and all these storylines all came together and entwined in a very clever way and the final match of the Taylor West and Craig Collins feud which went all the way back to 2017 and that was an intense feud to say the least that was fittingly a knockout or submission only match and that was brutal it really was incredibly hard hitting and that match deserves recognition I probably would have put that at number 11 on the list of top 10 matches of 2019 <laughs> because it was it lived up to all the hypes that was surrounding it I mean you know three years two or three years building the feud definitely worth that payoff Collins is a big fan favourite and it's really easy to get behind him because despite being a heavyweight he's, he's actually really agile and he's really he can really go in the room his frog splash is an absolutely devastating finisher as well I'm curious about this for our worldwide audience listening here in Sport and Earning because obviously you describe these matches brilliantly and you describe them a lot better than I would obviously and that's why we have you on here Lucy but do you feel like as now the reporter of KOW that you actually can root for for the wrestlers and if you are is there a wrestler or two that you might root for most that's an interesting question because as in the position of a wrestling fan I'm always inclined to support my favorites and even if you know even if I have to sometimes be impartial when I'm trying to write a report I'm still going to get behind the person who I think deserves the win more I think if I could pinpoint anyone in KOW that I really can't help but get behind all the time it's Lucas Neon and Craig College as I've already said those two are just they're really big fan favorites and when everyone around you is cheering for them it's infectious and you do genuinely want them to win and and you can root for them and you, you feel a part of the crowd and it you know it's like the kid again going to live wrestling and just getting behind the good guys and booing the bad guys it, it does bring back that kind of the fun side of wrestling even though i'm there and i'm kind of taking notes and i'm writing about the the match i'm still enjoying it as if i was just fun well lucy i'm sure that you have a huge notebook that you fill up each and every time kow is out there because you got some great wrestlers in the company and that's why we are honored to have on the sports report the number one global sports show that's the official reporter for kow and that is lucy Time!
Sports, as I am the boss of Sportarium, the station manager, the Reverend Tom Bryce, the host of the Sports Report, the number one global sports show. And everybody can follow Sportarium on Twitter and Instagram at Sportarium. You can like Sportarium on Facebook at Sportarium Media. You can subscribe to the Sportarium YouTube page at Sportarium TV. And you can listen to us, of course, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year at Sportarium.com. And of course, you can catch the Sports Report from Friday to Sunday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. UK Time. That's from Friday to Sunday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. UK Time on Sportinarium.com. And 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, you can listen to Sportinarium-related content. And I also want to give a huge acknowledgement to Trevor Lake, otherwise known as Lakey. Obviously, the man behind Sportinarium for giving us this opportunity. Obviously, we know that Lakey is on his way to doing some bigger and better things, obviously, as he's getting into the fight game and doing some promoting. And we're looking forward to talking about some of those big events coming up here, especially in September 4th, where we have another battle on the beach when it comes to the likes of the Blonde Bomber, Holly Tal, and Nicola the Hurricane Hopewell. I mean, it's a long list of fighters that you're going to see here on that card. So obviously, want to give Lakey a huge shout out. Cannot thank him enough for the opportunity. I also want everybody to follow KOW on Twitter and Instagram. And you can follow KOW on Twitter at KO underscore wrestling. And you can follow it on Instagram at K underscore O underscore wrestling. And you can also follow and like on Facebook at Knockout W for KOW. Find out why KOW is one of the premier wrestling companies around and why it's a company that we talk about here all the time. And we are here talking all things related to KOW with the official reporter to KOW. And that is Lucy Simons. And Lucy is also doing a phenomenal job as the president of the Lancaster Union Pro Wrestling Society. And she is also a writer for the Mick Carters. And Lucy, for our worldwide audience listening here on Sportinarium, then you got to talk to us then about the Mick Carters and what your role is and how you get involved with them. Yeah, well, writing for KOW gave me the confidence to apply for this job at the Mick Carters. I just saw that they were hiring and I had this whole backlog of KOW articles that I could send as part of my portfolio. And, and I think that's why they gave me the chance to write for them. So obviously I can't thank KOW and ALP enough for giving me that chance because, yeah, like I said before, it's kind of, um, it's all kicked, kicked it all off for me. And writing for the Mick Carters, it's been a great experience because it, it's given me a platform to share my opinions on absolutely anything and everything to do with wrestling that I can think of if you know if I, I think of something that I randomly want to write a couple of paragraphs about all I need to do is just email Chris and tell him does this sound all right and he, he says yes and then it's published and it's just great and it's something that I'm I'm really proud of and you definitely should be and like I said before Lucy you can do a lot better job writing than I would so obviously somebody out there definitely knows what they're doing when it comes to the mid quarters and then I got to ask you also maybe the most important question since you know know so much about wrestling you definitely know a lot more about wrestling than myself and certainly our audience listening here on sport and area what got you into wrestling oh what a great question the thing is i couldn't pinpoint a single moment when i got into it but i do remember at a young age i, I don't have siblings but my cousins are quite like siblings to me we're really close they were big wwe fans when we were really young and i want to say probably around six or seven years old because my uncle got them into it as their dad as he was a big fan when he was younger in the 80s and 90s so he was a big fan of classic wrestling you know he still to this day will rave on about how much you know he loves hulk hogan and andrea the giant and all those old matches so they kind of introduced me to it and i always thought it was so awesome but I had no idea how to watch it or how to access it so I, I didn't really properly get into it until around 2011 I was around 10 years old and we finally got Sky Sports which um, over here in the UK Tom it's like it's like the main way you watch big sport events and you have to pay for it so we didn't get that in my house until I was 10 and that's how I started to watch WWE it was always something that I was kind of embarrassed about at that age because none of my friends watched it and especially as like a female wrestling fan I kind of felt alienated because it was such a male dominated business and I kind of felt a bit weird and I thought oh I don't know maybe I kind of watching it on the side but wasn't really a massive fan at that point but I did love it and it kind of never died down and a, a few years later in around 2014 I got really deeply invested so at this age, I finally had a TV in my room so I could sit and watch it all day if I wanted to and often I did I also had social media by them so I joined like an online community of wrestling fans which helped me feel less weird and actually part of something that was really big and like probably part like probably a fan and I could talk to people about what I thought and since then it's been one of the biggest parts of my life and it's led me to where we are today you said something interesting 
I want to go back to it because originally I wasn't going to ask you about it, but I think I should because we have a worldwide audience here on Sportinarium. And we're obviously not a pro wrestling podcast. We're not a wrestling show. So there's a lot of people out there that listen from all different walks of life. And you talk about obviously the fact that you're a female in a male dominated sport for fans or a male dominated, whatever you want to call it, industry, anything else, you fill in the blanks. And when I was growing up, I'm a little bit older than you. And when I was growing up in Brooklyn, I didn't know any girls that liked wrestling. But I kind of think now, 20 years later, it's a little different because I think obviously we've seen the success of the likes of a Becky Lynch. We've seen the likes of the success of Ronda Rousey, obviously crossing over, or a Sasha Banks or a Bailey, or obviously a Charlotte Flair or a Britt Baker at AEW. And it's a long list now of female wrestlers. So I kind of think it's a little different than when I was growing up in the Attitude Era, where I didn't, like I said, I didn't know any girls. I didn't know any females that liked professional wrestling. It was kind of like looked at like it would be weird. I think now, 20 years later, that would be different. I mean, talk to me about your thoughts on that in terms of now getting into wrestling and how people look upon it versus, let's say, when I was growing up. 20 years ago yeah it's definitely changed a lot even since I was a kid so in the early 2000s and as I said at the time I just didn't really it wasn't something that I felt like I could go out and tell people oh, I'm a wrestling fan and I didn't really feel like there was many female wrestling fans I thought oh I'm so unique I'm so different yeah I'm a female wrestling fan but they've always been out there I think I think with like the development of social media it's kind of given us more of a, a voice and more of a platform and I think representation has a lot to do with that you mentioned obviously Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Bronda Rousey, Bailey, etc, etc. You know, when I first started watching wrestling properly, it was still the Divas and AJ Lee was my hero because she didn't follow this typical kind of recipe for what a female wrestler was supposed to be at the time. She did completely her own thing and I really admired her for that. And I do think she is one of the main players in kind of this women's evolution or revolution or whatever WWE want to call it. And I kind of, I remember when the first women's championship was unveiled and it, it changed from the Divas championship and I was absolutely overwhelmed I couldn't believe it I never thought we'd see the day when that would happen and we've seen all the firsts happen first women's tag team champion for example first women's Royal Rumble first women's main event at Wrestlemania I never would have thought that would have happened 10 years ago if you told me that you know there was a women's triple threat main event at Wrestlemania definitely would not have believed you it speaks volumes about how uh, wrestling has come and I think it took way too long but at least we're there now and I, th- I still think that there's a lot of ground to cover I, I think there's still a long way to go in terms of gaining equality in wrestling it's still very much kind of a boys club but not as much as it was even 10 years ago and especially 20 30 years ago which is obviously good progress is always really good and it, it's helped me feel more comfortable to become a part of it and to actually become part of a wrestling company rather than just being a fan it, it's definitely made me feel more confident in my ability to do that Listen, Lucy, if you would have said even in the Attitude Era that there would have been a women's match that would have been a main event at WrestleMania, you would have been laughed at. You would have been like, what? Are you sure? What? Mm-hmm. What? People would have been, people would have laughed. They would have, you know, I mean, yes, you had Trish and Lita. I, I think that they started a little bit of where we were, mm-hmm. but even Trish and Lita, I mean, I know that they had the main event on Raw, I think in 2003 or 2004, if I'm not mistaken, and let the crack staff, I'm sure, will correct me on that, but I would have never thought... When I was growing up in school that you would have saw a wrestler, a women's wrestler, be a main event of a Raw, a SmackDown, or AEW, or you even see companies now that have women's wrestlers as world champions. I mean, so never would have thought that. But listen, things change. And I think obviously, like you said, it's it's good for wrestling. I think that women and females and girls, they should like wrestling. Why not? I mean, in all the other sports we see it, look at basketball, look at obviously football around the world. So to me, like you said, it's long overdue. And we're very happy to see that progress. And speaking of progress on something, I was curious about this for our worldwide audience listening here on Sportinary, because we've talked about all these different KOW guys. And for whatever reason, a number of them, or in Odyssey Pro Wrestling, the likes of a Tubit, the likes of the unhinged Will Carter, obviously the Cumbrian outlaw, Rick Marcus. I mean, we know that Odyssey Pro Wrestling has an event coming up on August 7th called Set Sail here in Morecambe. And I was curious about this here for our worldwide audience listening. And what's your thoughts on Odyssey Pro Wrestling? Odyssey is going to be absolutely huge. I mean, it's bringing wrestling back to Morecambe, which is known for being a hub of passion for wrestling. And it's bringing in familiar faces to the Morecambe scene 
and brand new ones as well and it's going to be huge it's got KOW energy and by that I don't mean just because it, it's it's being run by guys who've worked in KOW so Rick Marcus um, Andrew Decker and Ethan Edwards and it's got wrestlers from there but also in the, the really professional way it's being run and the posters are beautiful the promotion is brilliant and it's going to be excellent when it finally takes off and uh, I've got some actually quite exciting to announce exclusively and also here on the sports report that I'm actually going to be working for Odyssey as a reporter as well and also not just writing but doing on-screen interviews as well so this is something I'm really really excited about I'm, I'm really excited to get to speak to the wrestlers you know get to the bottom of what they think about the matches their feud what's going on getting to work on show days and, and show the fans what Odyssey is all about it's going to be absolutely massive so I'm I'm so excited to get started and to be a part of this company I know it's going to be huge when we actually get started it's going to it's going to blow everyone up ladies and gentlemen you heard it here first on the sports report the number one global sports show and on Sportinarium the number one global radio station that Lucy Simons is actually going to be involved with Odyssey Pro Wrestling I think Odyssey Pro Wrestling gets bigger and bigger and bigger each and every week here especially with us on Sportinarium because we heard it here first Lucy Simons is going to not only be a reporter for Odyssey Pro Wrestling she's also going to be an on air person an on air talent interviewer I mean listen Lucy that's a tremendous honor I mean that's a real big deal I mean it's one thing to write about the matches but now it's another to actually conduct interviews backstage I mean this is a pretty big deal I mean you're on your way to be in the next Mean Gene Oakland you're on your way to be in the next Jeremy Borash you're on your way to be in the next Michael Cole you're on your way to be in the next Renee Paquette whatever you want to call her at this point I mean you are on your way to being up there with those names that are mentioned I mean Lucy what does that mean to you? Thank you so much. I mean, that is um, that's very special being, um, especially Renee Young, like as um, of Renee Paquette as like you know a female reporter. That that's awesome. So thank you, and you know maybe one day. I'll be having my own radio show just like you. Who knows? But really, it really is an honour. I couldn't, I couldn't really believe it. It, it. You'd fit right in this role. What do you think? And I, obviously, I was nervous because it's not something I've done before. But why not? At the end of the day, this is something that I've always kind of wanted to do. I've always kind of seen myself in this role in wrestling. I've always wanted to be involved, and I'm being given the chance, and it, it is amazing. And I'm just so excited. It, it really does mean the world to me. I just wanna, I wanna get going. I wanna get started right now. Yeah, it, it, it really is a massive honour for me. Well, Lucy, I'm sure you're well on your way to having a show on the radio. Radio. I'm sure that you can definitely take over here on the Sports Report because I'm sure the worldwide audience listening here on Sportinarium would be more than happy to have me leave the chair at this point. So obviously we know that I am the man now behind Sportinarium. So obviously I am on my way to being the next Vince McMahon. So who knows? I'm sure that there was a day that Vince McMahon left the chair as a broadcaster and announcer. So I'm not quite saying that I'm a billionaire just yet, but I can certainly tell you that I'm sure there'll be one day, Lucy, I'll leave this chair and you can certainly certainly take over for me and we are here on the sports report talking all things related to KOW with the official reporter for now not just KOW but Odyssey Pro Wrestling and that is Lucy Simons and Lucy does a phenomenal job covering KOW we've talked about that here quite a bit here on the sports report when it came to the top 10 matches of KOW in 2019 and Lucy is also the president of the Lancaster Uni Pro Wrestling Society which covers all things related to the world of professional wrestling and now you heard it here first now she is also the only on-air interviewer for Odyssey Pro Wrestling, in addition to being the official writer and reporter. So Lucy is on her way to doing bigger and better things. She is clearly the jack of all trades and a master of all of them. And I am the host of the Sports Report, the Reverend Tom Bryce, America's Greatest Export, the station manager here of Sport and Area. We are talking all things related to KOW and anything else in the world of professional wrestling with Lucy Simons for a few more minutes. And Lucy, I got to bring him up again because we're going to bring him back on here next week. He's been on a couple of times here. He's obviously met a lot. We've called him the heart and soul of KOW. I know I've heard you talk about him here, but for a worldwide audience listening here on Sport and Area, what has ALP meant to you? As I've already kind of touched on, he he is the person who he replied to me when I sent a random message to the KOW Facebook page and he basically said, yeah, sure, I'll give you a chance. And I can't thank him enough for it, really. I really can't. Um, And, you know, I don't think many promoters would, would do that. Um, he, he was really kind of supporting me from the get-go and I really think KOW is lucky to have someone like that as the 
kind of head person to go to because he's obviously so passionate about wrestling and he put into it and you know I wasn't at KOW when he played the role of the evil authority figure so my image of him hasn't been tainted by anything like that so you know <laughs> I, I hold him very high in my estimation and, and you know what an amazing job he does as matchmaker I mean KOW is storyline driven which is why I love it so much and it's what makes it feel like such a big deal I mean the attention to detail is incredible you know when I was writing pieces detailing the feuds of Sheriff Steele and Rick Marcus and also the feud of Taylor West and Craig Collins and you know doing the research for them I couldn't quite believe how far back they went you know as I've already said like all the way back to 2016 and 2017 you know ALP does an amazing job on the Facebook page he keeps everyone updated with the stories he reports all the matches and yeah the Facebook page is a great archive of anything you could ever want to know about KOW so he obviously and you know he watched all the matches he keeps notes on them all and he obviously cares deeply about everyone at KOW including the fans and all the staff and all the wrestlers and I don't think you get such a conscientious booker in wrestling anywhere else really I think everyone at KOW is really grateful for him and the, the role that he plays because he, he really he does put all of his heart into it and you, you can tell because the product that they put out is incredible and you wouldn't get that if anyone was unhappy backstage or if there was you know funny business going on you, you wouldn't get such a quality kind of ring showing if you know if the booker wasn't 100% behind it so I think it is really special and ALP what a brilliant job he does absolutely and listen Lucy ALP has literally done everything on behalf of KOW obviously with the academy obviously with setting up the ring I mean that's a hard job in itself and ALP has long been a part of that he talked about that with us here on the show obviously being an on-air talent whether it was a general manager whether it was somebody that did ring introductions I mean he's pretty much done it all on behalf of KOW so maybe he is Vince McMahon to KOW because obviously Vince McMahon we saw all the great things that he has done for the WWE in terms of making it what it is today and ALP has definitely done that as well and I gotta ask you then Lucy for our worldwide audience listening here on Sport and Area and also for the KOW fans out there I mean how much have you thought about KOW's return and what it'll mean to you? I've been thinking about it since the show got cancelled I'm not gonna lie I, I can't wait to get back to Cloud9 and get reporting again like I miss it so much like I said earlier like live wrestling has been the thing that I've missed the most and it, it's so special like for me it's the biggest part of being a wrestling fan like without KOW I probably I'm, I'm not sure if I'm no I, I think I still would be a wrestling fan but I don't think I'd be as passionate as I am today because it reignited my love for wrestling so it, it has been gutting not to have it for a year I, especially after 2019 was absolutely you know it was a it was rocket from start to finish it was mad and every match card was stacked and to be able to kind of go from that to nothing was very difficult but I think it just means that 2021 and 2022 are going to be brilliant and so I'm really eager and I know it's going to be absolutely brilliant. And we know that as well. We're very excited to see a KOW return in the near and distant future. We're very excited. And that's why a rising tide always lifts all boats. And we know that KOW has finally got that rising tide that is going to lift us. But I want to ask you this, Lucy, here, before we get your closing thoughts and if a few other thoughts and moments that stand out most maybe in watching KOW. When it comes to Odyssey Pro Wrestling, and Odyssey Pro Wrestling, we've talked about quite a bit here over the past several weeks on the show and some of the matches and obviously we had two bit on the show a few weeks ago and we got to hear from him on his open challenge and I know that now you're an on-air talent and I know that now obviously you're going to be an interviewer but I was curious if there were a few things that you were watching closely from your vantage point when it comes to Odyssey Pro Wrestling yeah you mentioned two bit and his open challenge and that's going to be huge I'm looking forward to seeing who's going to answer that who's going to be brave enough because we know that two bit can be really brutal and actually he's having a bit of a change of attitude which I think is going to be really interesting to see so I I'm curious to see if he's going to cut in corners to win the match or if he's going to just go straight in and, you know, clear cut, go for the victory this time. I'm not sure, you know, as the Rat King now, he's got a new finisher as well. I think it's going to be very interesting to see what he does, especially with Jennifer by as well, which is quite different rather than the underclass. He's got a valet or um, Jennifer by his side. So that's going to be definitely something to look out for for everyone. And I also think that P. Davies is someone to look out for. I mean, he's already been making waves in Odyssey and he's not even stepped in the ring yet. He's been saying a lot of stuff him and Rick Marcus potentially going to be a team and I'm looking forward to seeing that I mean those two I mean Rick Marcus has been working so hard over lockdown I mean he is in the shape of his life so I'm really looking forward to seeing him in the ring again absolutely and listen the Cumbrian outlaw I mean he's a new person he was somebody we saw in KOW that dominated in that company and now he looks like a totally different person and the natural born fighter R.P. Davis we know here from his boxing days because obviously 
obviously that's how we got connected with him because we cover boxing here, not only on the sports report, but also on all the Sportinarium shows. And R.P. Davis is somebody that Trevor Lake has known very well. And obviously that's how we got in touch with him. And he's in phenomenal shape. Also, Scotty Rock, who has had a war of words, which we've had profiled quite a bit here on this show. He's another person to keep an eye on. Listen, 2-Bit is definitely on his way to bigger and better things. Obviously, the Rat King and the Rat Trap. And also, shout out to Jennifer. And it's a new look for 2-Bit. I think it's a look that's going to serve him very well here in Odyssey Pro Wrestling. So there's a lot to look forward to here in Odyssey Pro Wrestling. But I wanted to ask you this question, Lucy, because I know that there's probably a lot that's on your mind when it comes to the world of professional wrestling. But when it comes to being now a reporter slash interviewer, we've talked about obviously the difference in being a reporter versus being a fan. Are you going about this any differently, especially when it comes to Odyssey Pro Wrestling? And have you looked at maybe different stuff that AOP has done in the past or obviously Ethan Edwards because we know Ethan has done that obviously with KOW. I mean, are you preparing any differently as an interviewer now versus let's say a reporter? With COVID and everything kind of pushing everything back, it's been a little bit different difficult to prepare because as soon as I, I kind of oh I'd love to prepare but then I didn't know when the shows were going to start but now we've got a date the first Odyssey show so I, I'm starting to kind of prepare I'm not trying to be any different from who I am I'm trying to be myself and I'm trying to you know be as authentic as possible so I think for me I'm I'm, uh, I'm watching other interviews do it see how they do it um taking notes from yourself and your charisma and try to um emulate that and just ultimately just being myself and um yeah it's definitely it's going to be different to obviously just write about things to actually you know get on a mic and speak to a wrestler in person in front of a camera it's going to be a big step for me I might be awful at it at first but I know I'm going <laughs> to keep on trying I'm going to stick at it and I'm just really excited more than anything a little bit nervous yeah of course but just really really looking forward to the challenge Listen, Lucy, you don't want to take any advice. Don't take any notes from me. Because listen, if you take advice and notes from me, you're going to fail. So I can certainly assure you that I am the last person on the face of the earth that you want to take any advice from or take any notes from. So I am sure that there are many qualified people that you can look upon to. And obviously, Ethan and ALP certainly know what they're doing. They have a track record that you can definitely look at. Obviously, we've talked about, obviously, Renee Paquette and all the great things that she's done. She's somebody you might want to take look at a Lillian Garcia maybe Sarah Schreiber I mean there's a lot of people from the past and present that you could definitely pay attention to I don't know if Tom Bryce the Reverend Tom Bryce is somebody that you want to pay attention to but I am certainly very humbled that have known the fact that you are definitely listening to what I have to say and are paying attention to that so for that I am certainly very appreciative and very grateful and always humbled and honored when anybody puts me in any type of discussion or any type of category but Lucy before before I get your closing thoughts, I want to ask you, because I know there's a lot of moments, a lot of things that you've got to see on behalf of KOW, especially now in your role as a reporter and a writer for KOW. But is there one or two matches or one or two moments that stand out most for you when it comes to KOW? Well, I've already mentioned this match earlier, but Taylor West versus Nightmare versus Craig Collins at Wanted, which was the first KOW event I went to. That does stand out to me because it solidified me as a fan because I, I was really not expecting to see a match of that quality, to be completely honest. It was just a brilliant match and as I said it would have fit in on Raw perfectly it was easily it would have fit in at any top promotion it could have been on any network and it would have drawn in fans and it made me think okay this company and these wrestlers are serious about what they want to achieve and they aren't taking it easy as you know it can be quite easy to do in an indie company you're wrestling in front of not a fairly big crowd but not a massive crowd not it's not a stadium it might be easy just to take it easy and to relax but yeah they go really hard for the fans and that match in particular definitely solidified that for me and made me realize that but of course i've got to mention the top two matches in in the list sheriff Steele versus rick marcus at the seventh anniversary show was unbelievable it was a great match as well as being incredibly emotional and that was a special moment for me like bringing being able to bring my friends from the wrestling society as well and um, so that was quite special and of course talk about again two bit versus lucas neon you've got two really young competitors just showing they are perfectly capable of being the face of any company and i've thought this before and I do think that if a WWE scout or an AEW scout went to a KLW show, they would snap up all the young wrestlers right on the spot and KLW would have to bring up some more from the academy because that is how good they are. Absolutely. 
absolutely 1,000%. And obviously, I think right off the bat, the likes of the current showcase champion, Lucas Neon, the former showcase champion, 2-Bit, also one half of the current tag team champions, the unhinged Will Carter. Those are three at the top of anybody's list. And I would also throw in there a Taylor West. I would also throw in a War Machine, Craig Collins, the current world champion. As these are the wrestlers that any scout, and especially a WWE or an AEW scout, would want to gobble up and take as soon as possible because these guys are ready for bigger and better things. And that's why we are very excited about the future of KOW. We're also excited about the future of Odyssey Pro Wrestling because we know that August 7th, we are getting ready to set sail with OPW and all the great things that the company is doing. So we want to make sure everybody follows Odyssey Pro Wrestling on Instagram at Odyssey Pro Wrestling. Also on Twitter at OPW underscore UK. And also on Facebook, you can like it at Odyssey Pro Wrestling and find out why everybody is getting ready to set sail. And also everybody can follow KOW on Twitter at KO underscore wrestling and on Instagram at K underscore O underscore wrestling. And you can like on Facebook at Knockout W. Lucy, you've done a phenomenal job with us. Congratulations on being named now an interviewer with Odyssey Pro Wrestling and also a reporter. I'm sure you're going to do bigger and better things and you are definitely going to knock them dead. But I want to give you the floor. I want to give you any closing thoughts. I also want you to plug all of your social media, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, also anything related on behalf of the Lancaster Uni Pro Wrestling Society, anything on behalf of the Mid Carter so we can keep up date with all the great things that you and they are doing. So I can't thank you enough for the opportunity. I want to give you the floor. I want to give you any closing thoughts. Please plug all of your social media and all social media related to Lancaster Uni Pro Wrestling Society and the Mid Carters. And the floor is yours and fire away, my friend. Well, thank you so much for having me, Tom. It's been an honor to be on your show. I love listening to um, your shows with all the KOW guys and it really caught me off guard when I heard you shouting me out for the first time when I, well, we really wasn't expecting it. So thank you for that and for all your lovely kind words today. I think I'm not going to fit out of my room because my head's going to be so big. So thank you so <laughs> much. Um, so social media, here we go. So you can follow me on Twitter at Cesaro Stan and you can follow me on Instagram at Lucy Simo one and you can follow Lancaster University Pro Wrestling Society on Instagram as well. It's at Lancaster WrestleSock and on Twitter, I think it's the same or it's something similar and on Facebook as well it's just Lancaster Uni Pro Wrestling Society and also make sure you check out the Midcarders on Twitter it's at the underscore Midcarders and you can find the website from there or it's the midcarders.com there's loads of great articles on there not just from myself but from loads of different writers bringing them forward loads of different content it's awesome and yeah I think that's everything all right, well, short and sweet and to the point. And Lucy, obviously, we cannot thank you enough for this opportunity. Everybody can follow all of those great sources of content because I'm sure that Lucy is going to be adding content to there. And they may be called the mid Carters, but I'm sure one day these talented writers will definitely be main eventers. So I am sure that the future is definitely neon, no pun intended, for all of the writers and everybody involved <laughs> with the mid Carters and also the Lancaster Uni Pro Wrestling Society. And of course, everybody wants once again, can set sail on August 7th for Odyssey Pro Wrestling and stay tuned for details on if KOW comes back here later this year, which we are very optimistic that it will. So for you, Lucy, I can't thank you enough. Congratulations on being an interviewer and now a reporter for Odyssey Pro Wrestling. I'm looking forward to having you back here on soon in the near and distant future, and we'll definitely talk with you soon. Yes, I look forward to it. As we're here on the Sports Report, the number one global sports show with the official reporter for KLW and Odyssey Pro Wrestling where she's also now an on-air interviewer and she's also the president of the Lancaster Pro Wrestling Society and she's also a writer for the Big Carters and that's Lucy as I am the station manager of Sportinarium and the host of the Sports Report, the number one global sports show, the Reverend Tom Bryce. And stay tuned for more hard-hitting analysis here on the Sports Report and on Sportinarium with the wildfire Nate Reese as we talk all things related to the world of professional wrestling and we talk the past and the present and the future of professional wrestling, including some of our favorite memories and matches with The Undertaker. So stay tuned closely for that as we were just with the writer for the Mick Carter's president to the Lancaster Uni Pro Wrestling Society and also the official reporter for KOW Odyssey Pro Wrestling. That's Lucy Simon.
Ravens. As I am the host of the Sports Report, the Reverend Tom Bryce, and stay tuned for Wildfire Nate Reese to talk some favorite matches of the Undertaker as we were just with Lucy Simons here on Sportinarium and on the Sports Report.